For my interview, I sat down with Adam Dixon, who's the volunteer coordinator from Second Harvest Food Bank, and the reason I decided to choose him is because that's where I actually completed my service project. We started out discussing the process involved when local charities request food from the food banks. Um, there's an initial application process, and in order to be accepted, the recipient of um, the food has to be a 501c3 company, which means that they're a not-for-profit and tax-exempt. Um, once their application is accepted, what they do then is they go out to the area that the nonprofit agency is going to be storing the food, and they actually inspect for cleanliness and adequate storage space. One of the main concerns that charities and donors alike have has to do with the risk of lawsuits and liability. For instance, a local restaurant refuses to donate their leftover food for, feel that, for fear that they're going to be sued if it makes someone sick. There is actually a bill that protects people and individuals um, who donate food to the food bank. It's called the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Food Donation Act. And what it does is it provides peace of mind to people who want to donate the food um, because if something does come back, uh, they are not held liable for any illnesses that the food might cause. And given that 70% of the food that the food bank receives is perishable, Adam explained to me that they are in the process of trying to expand the population of local restaurant donations. <clears throat> the Good Samaritan Law makes me question one thing. Um, I have, have noticed in the past when I've worked at restaurants and country clubs that they say that they have a policy that they can't donate their food and either they don't know about the law or they're just too apathetic um, to care about the law and too apathetic to donate. Um, I question Adam about food items that are not acceptable at the food bank and how much food he thinks is actually thrown away. He explained that homemade food items like canned vegetables or canned fruits are not accepted and if they do receive those items they are immediately disposed of. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to give me an estimate on how much food he thinks is wasted. Uh, given the fact that my service project was a summer food for kids program, I was interested in what counties he thought had the greatest need. And He told me that Hancock County was the number one in poverty and Johnson County was right behind it. He explained the reasons that Hancock experienced so much poverty was because, number one, their unemployment rate was so high, number two, their economic development was so low, and those factors stem from the fact that there are no major highways or routes to get to the area, so they can't get back and forth to work as easily as some of the other places can. <clears throat> when I looked up the, st the statistical data on Hancock County, their poverty rate from 2006 to 2010 was 30.6%. And the overall poverty rate for Tennessee is only 16.5%. So that's a huge gap. Um, the overall medium household income fell at $23,125 for people who live in Hancock County, which is far below the U.S. medium income, which is $51,914. And if any of you are interested, you can go to quickfacts.census.gov and you can look up the info for your county or your state. Adam and I talked about the new Sam's Club facility that Second Harvest recently acquired. The plan is to move all their operations to, the, to this facility by the end of 2013, and he sees this as a great opportunity for Second Harvest as it provides greater storage space and more room to expand their service programs. Um, he also explained that with the new programs, there will be an increased need for volunteers. Currently, they have 30 volunteers in their core program, um, and those are people who work at the facility one to two times a week and they have about 150 to 160 special events volunteers and those people only attend the larger food drives and events. They also have 20 paid employees currently at the food bank and he emphasized that there is a need for more volunteers with specialized skills um, like management, fundraising, PR, and computer uh, experts and I suggest referring your friends and family with these skills to help with their efforts. We also discussed the role of the state, local, and federal government in this endeavor. He explained that without the State Department grants and subsidies, it would be almost impossible to help these services or to give these services to the community. He also wanted to make sure that the importance of private businesses and corporation donations weren't overlooked, as they are very indeed necessary. The bulk of their government funding comes from USDA commodities through the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, and Adam mentioned that the Farm Bill is something that's very important to food banks. Um, it's currently known as the Food Conservation and Energy Act of 2008, and this initiative directly affects the operations of all the food banks across the U.S. Every few years this bill is edited and changed in order to satisfy current agricultural initiatives. In 2008, changes included an increase in SNAP benefits, the Food Assistance Program, food bank soup kitchens, and as well as 
as adding a new fresh fruits and vegetable snack program, which is meant to help school students in need. This bill increased funding from nine million to 70 million a year, 50 million of it going to distribute the food, the fresh fruits and vegetables basically to the students. And three million is used to conduct surveys about the school nutrition to examine what exactly the students are eating. One of the questions I had for Adam um, was I asked him what items the food bank is always in need of but doesn't get enough of. Um, he mentioned that protein in all forms was something that they were always falling short on. Things like canned tuna, canned chicken, and even peanut butter are items that they're continuously having low supplies of. The final topic he and I discussed is his opinion on the major cause of hunger in America. He passionately maintained that poverty is the number one reason why hunger exists in America. He supported this idea with the fact that since 2009 and the huge increase in unemployment, the food bank has seen the most increase in need in two decades. From 2009 to 2010, the amount of people helped went from 36,000 to over 38,000 a month, and from 6 million pounds of food to over 8 million pounds of food a year. That's an increase of 2,000 people per month and 2 million pounds of food a year. This is an incredible correlation with the 0809 global financial crisis and also in direct relation to the peak, of, the peak of unemployment in the U.S., which started in October of 2009. Programs initiated through Second Harvest, like the Kids Cafe, the Backpack Program, and the Summer Food for Kids Program, are all valid efforts to help alleviate hunger, and anyone can become involved in these efforts. Even individuals can do a lot to help this program. For instance, they have a sponsor a child program for the Backpack Initiative, and just $93 a year can provide a child with 15 bags of grocery items throughout the school year. This program helps over 4,000 students through 135 schools in our area. It provides you know, things like canned food, easy pop-top lids, shelf-stable milk, um, stuff like that, and it's stuff that kids can prepare easily on their own. Usually these um, bagged items are given out right before long breaks from school or right before the weekends and each eligible, eligible child receives two full bags a month. In summary, the Second Harvest Food Bank plays an integral part in helping to alleviate hunger in our area and it provides a necessary service to many children, families, and adults in need throughout Upper East Tennessee. It's up to our little communities to work together to end hunger and combat the stereotypes that label this growing population of our sisters, brothers, mothers, and fathers. I encourage all of you to continue your volunteer and activist efforts and truly make an impact in the lives of others. Thank you.